and let's go right ahead and get into this second segment, which is going to be focusing on the Pelicans matchup and primarily DeJounte Murray and the apparent injury that he sustained in the previous game. So the according to Shams, this was a tweet from Shams, the New Orleans Pelicans guard DeJounte Murray is feared to have a fractured left hand, sources tell ESPN. Difficult opening night injury for Pelicans and Murray, who posted 14 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds in season opening victory over Chicago. And to think, he played he played 30 minutes in this game. So imagine if he played a little bit more, just how many points and assists he would have been able to produce without having that fractured hand. So this... This is a very, very big problem for the Pelicans, and definitely not something that they expected coming in from DeJounte, let alone coming in at the start of the season. I mean, th- this is really just, this is bad. And this sort of, this injury exposes the Pelicans and their lack of depth. Because if, you know, the Pelicans, they're a team that has star power, yes, but they're also a team that doesn't, that lacks depth. And I mentioned before how they're still searching for a rim-protecting center, which is something that they really, really need. And now that they lost a key piece to them on the offensive end, like, their defense is, like, they're going to have to try and rely a little bit more on their defense to try and prevent teams from outscoring them. Since, you know, DeJounte is is not going to be able to produce for several weeks. Again, not entirely sure how long DeJounte Murray is going to be out for, but... This injury is really, really bad news for the Pelicans. Now, Murray has likely sustained the injury trying to brace himself while falling in the fourth quarter of their game against the Chicago Bulls. If so, with just over two minutes remaining and a 12-point lead, it was, like, it was very untimely. Like, that being said, the Pelicans, like, thin point guard depth, it's going to get tested. Because, again, while I did say that they don't have much depth at the center, they don't they don't have that much depth at the guard position either. Excuse me. So, Jose Alvarado is going to have to um is going to have to play phenomenally well for the Pelicans if they have any hopes in these um in the coming weeks without DeJounte Murray. And he also shut down rumors of being involved in a car accident on Wednesday and it he could end up starting in Murray's place for um, however long he needs to, alongside with C.J. McCollum. Like, I expect C.J. McCollum to start producing a lot more for the, for the Pelicans. And speaking of the Pelicans and their performance, actually, let me go ahead and continue reading with this article. So, it's another possibility they let the, um, C.J. McCollum run the show while Murray rehabs, and um, the 12-year veteran, obviously, is more of an off-guard like type of player but um, an off-the-ball kind of player, but he does have enough experience and passing ability to hold down the, the fort at the point guard position. Now, he even has an advantage over Alvarado in this area, but McCollum's defense is, like, one of the worst things I've ever seen. I can't, I, like, there's no other way to sugarcoat it. Like, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum being terrible defenders are one of the many overlooked reasons as to why Portland was unable to make it deep into the playoffs outside of 2019. And that's a that's a problem with CJ because again, he's not getting younger and the older you get, chances are the less effort you're going to want to put on defense because you're trying to put more of that effort on the offense, right? So the idea of CJ McCollum trying to play defense is something that should scare the Pelicans. However, one thing that the Pelicans can leave off with on a more positive note is the fact that they ended up winning this game rather comfortably. They ended up winning 123-111 to against the Chicago Bulls. Um, let's see. DeJounte Murray, like I said, 14-10-8. and CJ McCollum ended the game with 23 points, 5 assists, and along with 2 rebounds as well. And he didn't really shoot the ball all that well, 9 for 19, but still, that's like just below 50%, so it's not that bad. He also shot 5 for 11 from 3. And Brandon Ingram, this is, uh, this is the key performance. Brandon Ingram ended the game with 33 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, 2 steals, and a block. So this would most likely, if he continues playing like this, this would most likely increase his trade stock and possibly allow the Pelicans to increase their depth and conti- and like you know meanwhile they also give a team a solid enough player in order to compete right 
So another possibility is that they actually try and sign Brandon Ingram to the max, even though I don't really think that's going to happen just based off of the trade rumors that we've heard from the Pelicans over recent years and recent memories. I mean, Brandon Ingram has been on the trade block for a very, very, very long time. And it's just, it's sort of, a, it's ridiculous how they haven't really pulled the trigger on him yet. However, they want to see if they can increase the value in trading him and trying to get more pieces for their team. So it makes sense. Now, on the Chicago Bulls side, Zach Levine, of course, is the leading scorer for the Chicago Bulls. Ended the game with 27 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and a hyper-efficient 10 for 17 from the field, 5 of 8 from 3. Nikola Vucevic also played really well in this game. Ended the game with 21 points, 11 rebounds, 1 assist, shot 8 for 12 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3. Let's see, who else played well for the Bulls? Jalen Smith, 15 points, 5 for 8 from the field. Giddy, 14 points, 5 for 11. Also was able to accumulate 5 rebounds and 3 assists along with that. And, like, you know, just an overall solid performance coming in from the Bulls. It just wasn't enough to beat the Pelicans in this matchup. The Bulls shot 10 for 34 from 3, which is 29%, compared to the Pelicans, who shot 14 for 37 from 3, which is 37%. Now, the Chicago Bulls, they ended up winning the competition in the field goal department. They did shoot 48% compared to the Pelicans' 46 but again, it's marginal. It's very, very close. It's a very close difference, not to mention the fact that the, Pel that the Pelicans ended up taking 11 more shots than the Chicago Bulls, and they were still just 2% off in field goal percentage. They won the three-point battle, and that was the ultimate deciding factor in them winning this game. And this is like obviously you know the bulls i don't expect the bulls to be a playoff team i don't expect them to be a competent team i expect zach levine to i mean the hope is that zach levine ends up getting traded but i don't really think that that's what's going to happen i don't think that zach levine might get will get traded because the bulls they've been holding on to zach levine for a very long time every single time we think he's going to get traded he ends up not getting traded so i don't I'm not that confident that the Bulls are going to be able to make a deal or even find a deal that suits them. But that's all that I really have to say on the second segment. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the Clippers matchup against the Suns because I did watch that game and I watched it go into overtime. And we'll be right back after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned if you guys are interested. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 